this tavern talk is not going to be like the normal tavern talks we've done in the past. Specifically because what I want to do today is to get in, answer questions about the beta, um, just because I know it's kind of rough starting out. I know a lot of people kind of got like freaked out by it and everything. A lot of those people probably weren't here for Alpha 1, because Alpha 1, you know, kind of freaked a lot of people out too. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, next, either next Friday or the Friday after, I just don't want to schedule anything too, you know, too soon. And then, you know, something pops up with, uh, you know, meeting with somebody or something on the team. Uh, we're going to go back to the normal tavern talks. And what I would like to do for those is those will be a time where we'll have a little bit of like a, hey, this is what's going on with the team. This is what, you know, this is kind of our plans or this is what we've done so far this week. Show off a little bit of concept art, show off like some new like location of the game or something, you know, just a little bit like a five minute kind of like, here's what we're up to. And then after that, we'll do, um, We'll do like a bit of a just a kind of question and answer kind of thing with a handful, probably do like 10 to 12 questions. Try to keep it down to about an hour. Um, once again, record it, put it out for everybody else to see that way we can keep up. And we're just going to kind of keep rolling with that. I don't know the schedule we're going to be on. Um, I'd like to do it more often than every month. I'd like to try to aim for like every three weeks to do a tavern talk. Or alternatively, we could do like, um, like a really small one every two weeks where it's just kind of like a, you know, everybody just comes in. We just kind of like, you know, shoot the shit with each other, just kind of talk about stuff, let you guys know what's up. And then, you know, once a month we do a big one where we reveal a bunch of stuff. We can hold a poll about this. We can kind of get everybody's, you know, uh, kind of feel the temperature in the room on how everybody feels about it. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of the, let me know if I'm talking too fast too, by the way, which is what I do when I'm, when I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is kind of the plan for everything at the moment. So I got a bunch of questions that came into the questions for Team 21. So this was uh, Cosmic posted these. A lot of people asked the same questions. I think what he did was he just kind of went through and consolidated a lot of what we were seeing. So number one is why why did the somewhat regular tavern talk stop? Um, was there a particular reason why direct communication from Team 21 started to slow down? This answer is going to answer some of the other questions that have already been asked. Over a year ago, the team grew a lot. We went from, I want to say it was seven or eight people. We grew to like 23 or 24 uh, really fast. And, you know, all of a sudden we have like these amazing artists. Some of them are juniors. Some of them are mid. Some of them are seniors. You know, this is my team now. Xander starts getting all these devs on. We've got a uh, this 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 uh, outsourcing well not outsourcing I'm sorry contracting company that's you know hooking us up with people so we're having to do all these like interviews we're having to meet with people we're having to get people you know if somebody doesn't understand Unity we're kind of getting them kind of you know helping them understand Unity helping them understand you know how we're doing all the file sharing and everything and how we're working on all these projects together understanding art pipelines understanding developer all these things right. And this is the first time Xander and I are, are having to do this, right? Um, and, and, and I say Xander and I just because, you know, Xander and I were, were you know, art lead, dev lead. Um, you know, Tyler had his experience. He came in, he was helping us with stuff. Jeff's sitting there helping with, like, you know, narrative things. And, and he's you know, kind of off in his own little world doing all that. And Xander and I are sitting here having to learn how to be managers of all these people now. You know, we've, we've managed people in the past, but we never doing it at, like, a store. Or doing it, you know, for like Microsoft is different than doing it for your own company, especially when, you know, Alexander and I, outside of managing people, you know, we're, we're, we're modeling, we're sculpting, we're working on terrain, we're, you know, we have our own jobs we have to do, you know, so we're having to put that down. So this will go on for, you know, months. And it doesn't feel like months to us, right? Because you're working 18 hours a day, 16 hours a day, sometimes 20 hours a day, working through the weekend, you know? And and then at some point you sit and you go, oh, yeah, uh, we haven't talked to the community in months, have we? And, uh, you know, and, and, and Cos is sitting there telling us, saying, OK, we need we need to tell everybody something. OK, OK, well, let's try to get something together. Let's try to get something together. And so, we you know, we, we pulled the blogs together and, and they were, you know, they're kind of missing stuff because, you know, the fear was, you know, we're worried about competition looking and saying, oh, well, this is what they're doing. Let's try to do that now. Right. We don't really have that sentiment anymore. We're not worried about other people watching us, we're not worried about other people trying to copy us. We're just, you know, we're worried about ourselves now. 
We're worried about you guys. We're worried about making sure that our communication about what we're doing with the game and you know our direction for the game is like healthy, healthy communication between us and you guys. Um, because you know, especially the, the the people that have backed us in the past to help us get here, you know, they deserve that. They deserve to know what it is that we're doing. I hope that answers that a bit. So number two is why did you all choose to move into beta phases after testing the back end rebuild? Why not just continue alpha stages three, four, et cetera, and generate more keys? So that is partially also answered by my first answer. We thought that if we went from alpha one and alpha two, everybody's waiting for beta one and beta two, and we come out and say, okay, we got alpha three and alpha four, we're going to sell more keys to that that everybody would have been pissed, right? The truth is, is that most people would have been okay with it. We should have come in and communicated with you guys what our plans were and what we were thinking about. And we could have worked with you guys on feedback from that. And we probably would have had a better answer on it. But generally, genuinely, it's because we, we, were, we, we were ready to go from alpha two to beta one. So that's, that's really why we made that choice. Which goes into question number three, did Team 21 genuinely feel the product that we have been playing for the past week is ready to move in the beta stage? We did. What we were testing, like I said, there, there's, there's, there's no longer 23 people on the team. You know, there's, uh, I want to say, 18, 19 on the team now, maybe 17. I haven't done a head count in a while. Those people, you know, you can get like 15, 16 in at a time to play. You know, sometimes you get some of our, a couple of testers that can come in with us you're still not looking at 100 people. So there comes a point where, okay, this works good for us. This is working well for us. But we need like real server hit. We need to really know how this is going to work with hundreds of people, which we got with beta one and beta two. And yes, it was rough in the beginning, but just like our alpha two, you know, we our, our devs did a great job of working alongside the community with feedback, with bug reports. You know, they were watching streams and streamers and they were watching the, the, the Discord to see like what bugs would come up the most. And, I mean, it was. It, it seemed like it was every other day they were trying to get some hot fix out to everybody to get every the big stuff fixed, which is really, you know, uh, that's that's something we did great in A2. I think it's something that we've always been praised for, is 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 responding to community feedback and and quickly patching those things and trying to get the game in a nice polished state before trying to add too much stuff in. But yeah, anyway, so that's answered for that. Uh, question number four is. Team 21 advertised the testing phases of Alicia's Alpha 1, Alpha 2, Beta 1, and Beta 2, and we're already at the end of advertised testing phases now. So that one will come in a minute. <laughs> um, question number five was, what is really the difference between Beta 1 and Beta 2 that warrants calling this new build Beta 2? Why not just continue Beta 1 if bug fixing was the goal? Uh, kind of, There's kind of a couple answers to that. One of them we'll get to in a little bit. The first is just the difference between beta one and beta two is big bug fixing. Beta one was testing the backend that we currently had, which was this big new server authority backend. We wanted to test that and see how it did. We didn't have any network crashing. We didn't have anything like that with this. In fact, this was far more stable than alpha two was. Alpha two, we had all sorts of crashing all the time. Players couldn't even see each other typically. I remember many times trying to run uh, like a reviewer or a streamer through the game world, but we just weren't in the same little group. So we couldn't see each other. We were there with each other, but we just couldn't see each other. We didn't have that problem with this. In fact, I think, what was it, the, the last day of beta one or beta two, there was like, what, 40, 50, 60 people, something like that on the boat, like doing like a little dance party or something like that. So yeah, that's, that's the big difference. Beta two, we bring in a lot more hot fakes and bug fixes. We start bringing back the remnants of Free Forge, which is question number seven. I answered that as well. So that's really the big difference. There's all, there's there's more things being added in, more things getting fixed, more preparation for what's to come. Number six is why do you feel as if beta two is ready to be released? Why not add more meaningful content, implement more refined mechanics? If more time was needed to get this information, why would you not just extend beta one? Beta two, like I said, it, it was an extension of beta one, a lot of bug fixes. I, for that part of the question, that's pretty much it at the moment. Uh, so number seven, why was the initial mover of Fleet Forge class system in beta one not communicated to the community at all, even though this is one of the core systems advertised for Alicia? Balance is the answer to that. So, and this was my call, and I'm happy to, I'm happy to take the bullet on this one. So 
we had a we had a conversation at one point and we in free forge came up and i was worried that it with free forge it would be hard to balance pvp alexander and tyler were both like no one you know we don't have enough people playing pvp i'm like well pvp is going to be a big thing of course you know we get into beta one the sentiment i see is i would have much rather had free forge like we had in a2 or better than have pvp this was another this was another place where if if we had been better communicating with the community this wouldn't have come up of course as soon as we see people wanted free forge the immediate conversation on the team is let's get it back in let's figure it out and of course that's a lot of what we've been doing um since beta one when we first started seeing it is getting free when we were just working on it this morning getting all the ui and everything starting to set up for it um in fact it's it's much more like was shown on kickstarter than was shown in a2 it's much more like these little paths of each one of these like disciplines we'll get into that more in future tavern talks when we have uh, more updated artwork to show that but i'm actually i'm really stoked about it i think everybody's gonna love what we've got going for it and yeah number eight is how is the negative feedback from beta one and beta two influence the team's decision moving forward in development number one is better communication with our community i'm sure everybody's sick of hearing me say that at this point but that is a huge thing for me because, well, first, you know, you guys help make Alicia what Alicia is now. You know, you guys help make this big. You guys help make us blow up. You guys help everybody, you know, see us and know about us. And you guys help with Kickstarter and pre-Kickstarter. You guys kept Patreon going for us. You know, I mean, I miss the communication with everyone. It's not just communication. I just miss the hanging out. And I miss talking to people, you know. I, 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 that, that's what I miss. I miss just that community. Um, and I'm stoked to be back in and talking to everybody, you know, um, I know, I know cause is, is happy to have me in here. Um, and, and yeah, you guys will be seeing more of me. This isn't just like a one-off thing. This is, this is a place that we need to get back to where it's team 21 studio and the Alicia community working on this game together. Is team 21 considering moving forward with more community funding towards development? Okay. So yeah. Uh, we can go ahead and pull this bandaid off. We will be going into early access. Um, we will be having much more, you know, we'll be talking about this a lot more, letting you guys know what's going on with that. Um, letting you guys know about like the dates. We do have, we're working on a roadmap right now. Um, it doesn't, it's not going to include anything really set in stone just because when working on things, you can end up with something breaking, kind of needing to be set off to the side for a little while. But yeah, so there'll be a roadmap. It'll kind of let you guys know what we're working on. And it will, you know, some things will, you know, there'll be hot fixes, patches, and then just like, you know, expansion content. Number 10, is there an external investor group or group? Sorry, is there an external investor or group that is pushing the team towards an unrealistic release window? No. What's pushing us to go in, <laughs> to, to EA? And this is, this is real EA. Um, this is a, you know, this is a low, low price to get in EA. You know, this is this is not showing on on platforms that we're we look like we're full release, but we keep saying we're, this is real EA. We're doing this for a couple of reasons. One, um, we need to get back to where we can grow the team. We need to get back to where we can hire. We don't. Team Twenty One Studio hires and pays industry standard people and industry standard salaries. Uh, sorry, that sounds a little ignorant. We we pay industry standard salaries. And we hire the best people that we can to come in. It doesn't always work out. Um, we've had to let we have, we've had a lot of growing pains over the past year um, with learning who is a good fit, who isn't a good fit. Unfortunately, sometimes that comes in the form of and this I can kind of so I'm going to kind of go into a little bit of a tangent. But I so I've seen people ask why does the game feel like A2 after a year of development. The answer for that is that we had to rebuild our entire back end. That meant touching everything that was in A2 and sometimes rebuilding things over in A2. We hired on um, so many developers that, you know, you look at these resumes. These are people that have worked in the industry for 20, 30 years. They've worked on old MMOs. They've worked on old RPGs. They've worked on things like Morrowind. They've worked, some worked on like old school RuneScape. And, you know, you talk and it's all this great, oh, yeah, we can do this and we can do that. And, uh, you know, we can get, we, we had so many features that were supposed to be in beta one. And, you know, it takes months to get these things working. And you'd have these meetings where 
you're on a video call or something and show them that he's showing you this thing working. And then, you know, a month or two later, you go to put it in engine. It doesn't work at all. And you say, what's going on with this? And the person says, well, hey, you know, I, I got to work in exactly how you guys asked me to. He said, well, it's supposed to be server off, not client off. And they typically shrug and they walk away. And now you're left standing there, you know, with code you've paid for and a product that doesn't work. So this is kind of why it looks like the game isn't, you know, like much hasn't been done. A lot was done. But unfortunately, the code itself that we paid for uh, didn't work right away. The good news is, is that it half works. So getting a lot of these things to work doesn't take a lot, much more than time to do. But we didn't want to have to wait any longer because answering the question, answering the previous question, you know, we, we needed to get out of this private testing and we needed to get into something where we have hundreds and hundreds of people playing, giving feedback and working off that because like we're moving free forge, other decisions we've made, we make those decisions because we believe they're good, but it doesn't mean that we're making the decisions that are best for the game and best for the people that are playing the game. It's better for us if we can get that feedback from the players and help tailor it more. You know, I mean, you won't always go 100% into what people ask you to do, but you can take what you want to do and you can use that feedback to kind of help mold and shape the game. Um, so anyway, um, no, we don't have anybody pushing us and, and trying to get us to go really early. That's not what's happening here. This is us just recognizing that we need to be more public in our... Um, in the, in, in the product. Um, this is also, like I said, the funds from doing this will help us grow the team um, and it'll help us get more people on. Um, so yeah, that's, that's why we're looking at doing this. Number 11 is, would Team 21 consider adding some form of polling system to get community feedback for future additions or changes to Alicia? Uh, yeah, 100%. Um, we've looked at some things. We have some ideas for like the codex where if you report a bug, it'll be able to kind of like on a server screenshot where the player was. So like we know where they were when it happened, it shows us like a little ping. They can, it'll automatically take like, you know, like a screenshot of where they were, or they can send us a screenshot. And we'll, we've got some ideas for how to do like better um, bug reporting. And then like, if somebody asks for a certain feature, like FreeForge, and we see it's pretty unanimous to bring back FreeForge, we're happy to, you know, okay, well let's, let's figure out how to do this. So yeah, I'd like to see a system too where any other new feature we want to add in, or, or if someone just has a request for something, you know, we can get it put up. I think we did this for Alpha 2, actually, where people could vote on like a, a, new, a, new, uh, a new addition to the game in the form of a feature or some artistic change or something like that. And I'm totally down for that. We've been down for that, especially since like beta one, we were 100% with figuring out a good, clean, easy way to just get really good, fast feedback on uh on on game stuff uh and number 12 after the discussions and feedback given from community members throughout alicia's development time are you going to consider posting a roadmap that showcases how far along the development the team is will this roadmap be consistently updated yes totally down for it we actually have ba -ba -ba -ba, let me see if i can find our uh, concept artist i got her to start working on a background for the roadmap uh, so down in Tavern, this is the background that people will see on the roadmap. It'll be like a little artistically blurred out, blah, 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 and all that. Um, but yeah, we've been playing the roadmap. This is proof of it right there. Yeah, our concept artist is amazing. I'm actually really stoked because next week... Okay, so yeah, okay. Going to get a little bit into future stuff. So I think some people saw the, um, the Kobe, which is this little race of little small little hippo people they're kind of like our toka but you know in hippo form um they, the koba is the large version of that um so these are going to be like the agara um which some of you saw like the larger list so this is like this big hippo this big humanoid hippo enemy they live on an island called levea there's this massive if you see any of the new artwork on any of the sites or like any uh, it's this massive leviathan skeleton just just in this ravine with this huge village hanging in it. It's going to be like a gauntlet style dungeon. So you basically have to get from the end of it 
the start of it to the end of it with no res point in between there. So you basically have to get one shot or start all over again. Sometimes some of our dungeons kind of have like, like you know, halfway points and stuff like that, just because, you know, they can be, VR can be a little bit difficult, but, you know, anyway. Uh, yeah, so next Tavern Talk, I'm going to be showing off a bit of the art. I'll show off a bit of the armor. Uh, one of our new character artists has been designing this amazing um we've been kind of we've been kind of mixing styles up so it's kind of like this roman mixed with mayan kind of armor it's really really cool lots of like turquoise lots of uh like gold and stuff it's really nice um but yeah so anyway um that's pretty much it for this tavern talk um it's a little bit shorter like i said it wasn't going to be really traditional i just wanted to really get everybody kind of up to speed on what's been going on what we're planning on as we continue, like I said, doing Tavern Talks, I'm going to fill everybody in more. There's not going to be any more of this in-the-dark development where you guys don't know what's going on and everybody's saying where game and all that, game coming, um, and you guys are going to know what's up with it. You know? So that's, that's really good for everybody. I'm really excited, actually. I'm really excited for Early Access because we work better when we work with our players. We don't, you know, so... I, I'm, I'm excited to get into that and, and develop the game in a much more public space. One big change you guys are going to see coming is instead of starting this weird jarring thing where you start on a ship, we have a starting islands coming. And so that'll be the next thing that everybody gets to play in is these starting islands. Um, there'll be faction based starting out. And um, once you finish the starting island, it's going to be like this little tutorial and everything, you kind of you know, starting out, teaching you how to move around, teaching you how to use everything. Um, I think we're moving towards voice acting with some of the avatars so that you or the NPC so that you're not relying on just reading stuff. We've got uh, improvements to UI coming as well. No more of this weird white on a light background that all that's getting changed and updated as well. Um, yeah, a lot of big changes coming. Um, and we will get the next Tavern Talk set up. We'll get a date announced for that and we'll open up. I think, Sam, we can open up a channel and take questions in, I think. Mm -hmm. It's going to yeah. be a lot. So we'll basically just have to pick the ones that get repeated the most. Or we could do like a polling on the questions. So if somebody asks a good one, other people can upload it or something. I think um, um, what really worked out for the community here in the Discord is having that thread forum style section for users to post uh, their thoughts and suggestions, feedback and stuff. Um, we can do something similar that's more just a general... Um, suggestions ideas kind of channel um because those also can be reacted to uh kind of like upvoted so to speak okay cool that sounds awesome so we'll start working on that and see it'll either, like i said it'll either be next friday or the friday after we'll do the next tavern talk with everybody and we'll uh, have like artwork to show and everything and, and everybody be able to see all of it i think awesome. like the the biggest thing that the community is going to be just chatting about for the next several days is the EA stuff. Um, and I know the, that word is scary for a lot of people, um, but I, you know, I don't want to speak for you, Art, but I, I can assure the community that it's just out of like the best interest for the no, next no, no. steps I'm not, for us. <laughs> I 100% I get everybody's hesitation in it. EA always sounds like people are just throwing something up and ditching. That's not our intention. Obviously, Obviously, this is something that, you know, we have to prove to everybody, but anybody that was here, Alpha 1, Alpha 2, I mean, even in the betas, I know, like I said, I know beta was rough, rough, but like, I mean, we fixed it so quickly. We got so much done when it came to bug fixing. So I'm hoping that everybody sees that and knows that that's exactly how EA is going to be for us. It's not going to be, oh, look, we added in this big, amazing thing and we left 100 bugs just sitting there not fixing them. That's not us or... We are all about trying to polish as much as we can. Like, once again, that's what EA was. Everybody loved, e uh, sorry, I'm sorry, A2. Everybody loved A2 because of the polish we were put, able to put into it and the time that we had. You know, I always have to remind people because I have so many people that have told me like, oh man, A2 was so much better. And I'm like, yeah, I know it looked better, but it didn't play better. I know some of the, you know, a lot of it looked a lot better, but the back end for us was a nightmare. It never would have scaled into an MMO. We could have left it, you know, at like the small amount of people, but then it's never made better. You know, we need people to be able to go into a city at some point and see, you know, 40, 50 people running around and it's not lagging out. You know, right now it's a lower number and we've got people together and they turn into these little lists, but that's just us putting, you know, the safety net on. 
as we continue forward, that's getting brought back more to be able to display more people at once. Yeah, no, like I said, I'm really stoked. The, the team's excited for, for early access. Um, Cause like I said, we get to work more closely with everybody. The content that gets co- that that comes out, you know, we we get to take everybody's feedback and just use that to kind of make the you know make the game stronger. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be good. And like, with with the feedback, especially that we got from beta one into beta two, um, I mean, we I've spent hours going through everybody's messages here on Discord and um, consolidating it all into a Google Doc and going through all, everything that everybody has mentioned. And there's just fantastic feedback from you guys. And this is where like all the super fun stuff starts happening. And, yeah, um, no, it's gonna be good. Yeah, I think everyone everyone's gonna like what they see coming. We've got you know we've had to do a lot of the heavy lifting getting the back end rebuilt, and now we get to do all the fun stuff. We've got the hunter pets that have come in. We've got more going on with that. There's just a lot more class stuff that we can do now. There's a bug at the moment. I think there's some bug with Freeforge where you can apply magic to an arrow or something. And so we were like, instead of fixing it, we're like, okay, cool. Let's try to figure out a way to make a mage ranger. So instead of using a wand, you can imbue your arrows and bows to be able to just, you know, to fire more condensed, you know, magical arrows and stuff. So, yeah. So hopefully, you know, that's, I'm, I'm hoping that's something that people see and they're stoked about is that we're not, if we see something that people are like, hey, that's kind of a fun bug. Oh, well, they'll be coming back. Yeah, very much about very much about turning uh, bugs into features, with the exception of the flying uh, frying pan. <laughs> Can we keep Barry the boar though? That is Actually, sitting on I top think, of the roof. <laughs> I think we I think we've renamed Barry the boar to Bora the Explorer. Um, <laughs> um, that was the name that I came up with the other day. I didn't realize the community named the boar, so I just called it Bora the Explorer. And I think we changed the name on the nameplate and everything, too. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Anyway, yeah, uh, I am going to uh, I'm going to get back to working on these starting lines. I want to try to get these done soon um, and get some nice screenshots taken of them and everything for the next Tavern Talk for everybody to see. I want to thank everybody for sticking with us. I know beta was rough. I know it scared a lot of people. I don't know if Z-Storm is in is in the call at the moment or not, Um, but he was one of the people that was really pushing me to get back talking to the community shanty was as well but yeah i i'm, I'm excited to start this back up again um i think it's going to be great working with the community i don't think it's going to be great it is going to be great working with the community again um but yeah like i said I, you know i, I want to thank z storm shanty cosmic um there's probably others that i'm just not remembering right now that were just okay to- yeah ferocious yeah well i mean <laughs> thank you for streaming i i just mean for pulling me out of my hole and, and getting me back into talking to everybody. So I'm stoked to be back. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm knocking off the, the dust of all this and, you know, I won't be so, you know, so uptight about it next time I'm waiting, I'll talk. But yeah, the people that have been streaming, it's been amazing. Actually, I want to, uh, uh, anybody else that's, that's wanting to get into streaming or anything, you know, let us know. Um, I, I we, we can talk to some people. I'm totally down for anybody that's, you know, trying to grow an audience. You know, we can, we can start trying to, you know, kind of trying to help. But yeah, Ferocious, Z-Storm, K, like you guys, man, uh, it's nuts. Some of you were in there for like, what, 90 hours or something? And yeah, I think in, be- in between now and EA, we're, gonna, we're, we're definitely going to need help testing. So we're going to figure something out with maybe like a lottery to get in and test or, you know, I don't know. We'll figure something out. Because we can't just keep testing, you know, just by ourselves. So yeah, like I said, we'll talk more about this. Uh, we'll talk more about this um, next Tavern Talk with everybody. Yeah, I, I want to thank you all. Uh, thanks to everybody for the feedback in Beta 1 and Beta 2. It's been so helpful getting us back to everything, getting getting stuff fixed, getting stuff, you know, kind of, help, kind of helping us see where we need to go, what direction we need to go in. So yeah, it's been... Everybody on the team says thank you. You know, they they did they did tell me to say thanks. We had a meeting right before this, and everybody told me to say thanks. Um, so yeah, thank you, thank you to the community, thank you to everybody. We uh, we greatly appreciate your support. <laughs> so I'm just going to say goodbye, and uh, yeah, we will all we will all talk in the next tavern talk. Take it easy, everybody. All right, that is it for this tavern talk. I will keep you guys updated uh, with the next one that will be rolling out. Um, I believe he said in the next week or so. Um, just stay tuned for that, and yeah, just hang out in our channels and keep your eyes on the announcements. Thank you, guys.